In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this exact animation in Blender. As always, it is going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing X to delete the default cube, and then press Shift A and add a circle, then press S to scale up the circle, and we're going to use this for the tunnel. So go to the curve settings, geometry, and then we can extrude. And next, we can convert this into a mesh so that we can extrude on the X and Y axis as well. I press tab for edit mode, and I press A, E to extrude, then right click, and then S, then shift set to scale the extrusion down on the X and Y axis. Right now, the object is looking kind of strange, but uh, we can fix that by going into the uh, normals and then auto smooth. Okay. And then next, we can press numpad 7 for top view. Then go into wireframe view, then press Alt A to uh, deselect everything, then B to box select, make sure it's uh, set to face selection. And then we're going to press X to delete the uh, selected part of the mesh. And then we can go back to solid view, and then we're going to go to edge selection and then hold in alt and select the edge loop and then press F to fill. And then select the other edge loop and fill it by pressing F once again. And then hold in alt and shift so that we can select multiple edge loops. And then press N and then set the increase value to one. I'm also going to select the last phase, set the increase value to one so that we keep the shape when we add the uh, subdivision surface modifier to increase the uh, number of polygons. Then we can go to object and add shade smooth as well. Okay, and then we can create our first save. So I'm just going to call it it and then save. And then next, press Shift A and add a circle curve. Then press S to scale, and this is going to be our uh, tube. And press Shift A and add another circle curve. And we're going to use this one to create the uh, tube. So uh, we're going to go to Object under Bevel and then select the other circle. And by pressing S to scale down the other curve circle, we can change the uh, diameter of this uh, tube. So uh, let's try to make it fit. This first tube is going to be used to create the uh, tunnel. So I'm just going to save one more time, Control shift s And then we can go to Object and convert it into a mesh. And then to increase the number of polygons and make it smoother, we can uh, add some subdivisions and apply them. And then in order to create the tunnel, we need to enable an add-on. So let's go to Edit. Preferences, and then just search Bool Tool, which is included in Blender. And then next, go to Bool Tool, hold in Shift and select the other object, and then select Difference. And as you can see, we now have the tunnel. So before we continue, let's uh, save one more time. So uh, Control Shift S, click on the plus sign, and then save. And then we can press Shift A, and create the actual tube. So we'll add a circle, press S to scale. And then we can go into the curve settings. And then go to object once again. And then we can select the uh, other circle this time as well. So I'm just going to scale it down a bit so that it's smaller than the uh, tunnel. Make sure it fits well. Okay, so perfect. And then I'm going to press Control Shift S and save one more time. And then convert this uh, curve into a mesh. So select the uh, tube. And I go to Objects. 
Converge, and then Converge to Mesh. And then we can add a subdivision surface modifier as well to increase the number of polygons. And then press Tab for Edit Mode. And then I'm going to delete half of the mesh to create a half circle curve. So X to Delete. And then you can press R, then Set to rotate it on the Z axis. And then I'm going to go into uh, Solid View, and then press Tab for Edit Mode. And then hold in Alt to select the Edge Loop, and then press F to Fill. And then make sure to set the Migrus Value to 1 to make it flatter. And by going into the Object Data Properties, and then Enable Auto Smooth, it's going to be completely flat. And then press R, then Set. And we're going to fill the other one as well. So hold in Alt and then press F to fill, and then set the increase value to 1. Okay, and then I'm going to save one more time in case something crashes, and then hold in Shift and select the other object, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees on the y-axis, press S to scale, and then Control A and apply all transforms, and then press Shift D, S to scale, and then R, set the 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis, I press G and then X to grab it on the X axis. And then I'm going to duplicate this one as well. So press Shift D, Set, then 180. And then press R, X, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis as well. So by duplicating the tunnel and the loop, we can create some interesting patterns and some interesting animations. And then you can just select one of the tubes. This one you can rotate on the x-axis, this one on the y-axis, and then the last one on the z-axis. Also make sure to select the tubes, so hold in shift and select both of them, and then apply the rotation, so that the rotation will work properly when we add a driver. So let's uh, add an empty sphere, and then press G, then shift Z to move it on the z-axis, and this one is going to control the tubes. So let's go into item. And then you need to right click on the X rotation and add a driver. And then use the empty as the driver object. And when the empty rotates on the Z axis, this object is going to rotate on the X axis. And then we'll do the same for the Y axis, add driver and then use the empty as the control object and set it to the set rotation and let's do it for the last tube as well and you will see how it works very soon so just right click add driver select the empty and then set it to the set rotation okay and then when you press R then set you can see that we animate them all at the same time and then to add some variation we can select one of the drivers, edit driver, and add a constant and a different multiplier, for example, so that uh, this one moves at a different speed compared to the others, at least relative to its size. And then we can uh, change the constant on this one. And then for this one, we can make the variable negative so that it moves in the opposite direction. Okay, so now we have the animation set up. And before we uh, keyframe it, I'm going to add some lighting and some materials. So uh, let's start off by adding a background image. And then select environment texture, open. And you will find free HDRIs in the link in the description that you can use. For example, Chelsea stairs, which I like to use in tutorials. And then if you want to, you can switch to cycles. I prefer cycles when we have overlapping objects. And then use the GPU. I'm also going to increase the number of samples and increase the strength of the background image so that we get a bit more lighting. And then let's make the background transparent. And then we can add some uh, colors to these objects. So uh, I'm going to make this one yellow with just the default principal shader settings. 
and then I'm also going to add a uh, sun, set the strength to 2, and then press R twice to rotate the sun freely. And then we can add some colors to the rest of the objects as well. I decided to add some uh, yellow, red, sort of blue, green, and uh, so on. And you can, of course, add whatever colors you want to add. So uh, just play around with the colors and see what you like. You can, of course, also change the uh, settings for the principal shader as well. Okay, and then we're going to set up the camera. Press Control Alt Number Zero to set the camera to the current view. And I'm going to make the frame square. So something like this. And then let's see what it uh, looks like in rendered view. And then you can make some slight adjustments to the colors if you want to. And then next, I'm going to go into the render settings and enable the noising so that we get less noise in our render. And also select a folder for the final output. So, uh, I'm going to create a new folder, and you can create it wherever you want on the computer. Give it a name, and then we're going to save PNGs in that folder. And then the last step of the tutorial is, of course, to add keyframes to the empty so that we get the actual animation. So uh, let's uh, make sure to enable the overlay so that we can see the empty. And then press I to keyframe the rotation, then go to the last frame, and then press R, then set to rotate on the Z axis. I'm going to rotate around 700 degrees. And then press I to keyframe once again. And then press T in the timeline and make sure that the animation is linear so that the speed is constant. And if you want to set your animation, to 60 frames per second later, I recommend setting the new value for the time remapping to 200 so that you get twice as many frames for this uh, animation. As you can see. Okay, so now we have everything set up. So uh, let's just save one more time before we uh, hit the render button. Click on the plus sign. And then we go to render and then render animation. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. More tutorials coming soon for Blender. So uh, thank you for watching and subscribe.